Hello, everyone. Hope you had a nice lunch. Uh, so, we have had lots of great presentations yesterday and today, both from the business perspective and from the uh, technical side, even going really deep into technical details. And uh, we had uh, very good presentations from our vendors. So, so hopefully many of you ha uh, have been able to attend those. And uh, we at Digia, we implement lots of API management solutions. And over the years, uh, we used several different technologies to do that. And uh, that's kind of the idea of this presentation is to kind of give, uh, give you a more general overview of the trends we see when working with all these different technologies and implementing them in, in large uh, and medium-sized organizations. So what, what is coming up and how, how we see it. And there will be similarities to the presentations that we have had here. But uh, yeah, perhaps some, some new perspectives as well. Here is the contents of the presentation. Uh, just a quick show of hands. How many of you know what API management is? Okay. So we have some people who don't. So uh, for those of you, we have a short recap here. Uh, so it's been all about APIs uh, yesterday and today. So, but where do those APIs come from? We'll see in a bit, but once you have those APIs, say you have two, three, or five APIs, you're probably fine with just uh, publishing them without any special, uh, special platform or special uh, middleware. But when you begin to have multiple APIs, say 10, 15, uh, 50, 100, then that you will be ending up with, with these things like uh, how to find the APIs, uh, especially important if, it's, uh, if they are public APIs, but if, if they're internal, it's actually uh, very important as well. Um, security, so you don't want to go and implement security on each service again and again, uh, but, and, and there are different issues related to security where we have lots of good sessions like, like tokens and authentication and authorization. But all of those, we have kind of the best practice that, that is coming from, from, from the, the API management technologies and all the, the experience that, that people have had. And it's kind of put there in the product. So, so that's, that's one place to, to understand that it gives you better security to have that centralized so that you don't need to reinvent the wheel each time. Life cycle, maybe this is something also that we had one, one session on uh, API versioning that was really interesting. But we find when, when talking with customers that actually versioning is, is a lot neglected at the moment with APIs. So, and, and talking with developers uh, as well is, is that we have very different perspectives what versioning should be and when, when, how you should version, but, uh, but in any way, how should the consumers react to different versions of the API coming up? So, API management help with this as well. And then from the business side, um, when you publish APIs, and let's say you publish more uh, business APIs, not just technical APIs you take from your SAP system or, or similar, then you probably will be interested in, in okay, w which of those APIs will be used most, which, which is uh, something that we should really concentrate on in developing the, the experience better and, and using, and who is using our APIs, and, and the metrics that come with API management help with that. And here is just a short description of, of how API management works. But just to raise a few points here is that those APIs uh, come up from somewhere, obviously. So 
some people think that API management creates those APIs, but that's not the case. So some products support that, so you can implement APIs, but mostly it's just about publishing. So then you might have some package applications that may ha already have those APIs, or then you, you have some adapters built into the system that publish those APIs. And modern microservices applications, you might have lots of small APIs, or the application itself might have a couple more coarse-grained APIs. Or, like in many uh, large enterprises, you probably will have also systems that don't have any APIs. So for those systems, uh, you usually use some kind of integration platform to kind of API enable those systems. Okay, then going to the, the trends. So uh, the first trend we see, see a lot is, is cloud, obviously. But uh, now, uh, this year and last year, more and more multi-cloud. So uh, it might be the case that, that companies implement something, like uh, say you have uh, put your data warehouse in Azure, and, and then, but in, in some cases you then also want to implement your microservices application in AWS, for example. And uh, even if they are different use cases, uh, what happens is you end up needing API management in all of these clouds that you use. Plus, in addition to that, you also have the on-premise systems there, and there we have the same issue. So you might have those internal APIs that you want to use, or you want to publish information, for example, your product uh, externally. So what, what can you do then? Okay, so basically, of course, you can go and take from each cloud that you have the native API management abilities. So, so each cloud has their own kind of API management solution. And that's fine. Some people do that. But there you end up with the problem of governance and discoverability. So you will have separate developer portals, you will have separate technologies to implement the policies that API management does, for example, security. And uh, with APIs and API management, we also talk about a lot more than the technology. It's how the API development teams utilize that and, and use that, how the knowledge that, that kind of is tied to the product is used in the enterprise. So that will be a lot more difficult to uh, enforce using those best practices, using the API management tools, when you have several different platforms, obviously. So what we have found is the best solution at the moment, and this is the direction uh, actually most of the vendors are going for. All are not there yet. Some don't actually support this scenario at all but is to have one API management solution, and then you have a kind of separately deployable gateway that you can deploy on each of the clouds and on-premise. And in the ideal case, all the API traffic will not flow through the cloud at all, so meaning the management cloud, but it will be kind of uh, only flowing through, through the gateway. And of course, maybe some analytics will get published up to the management layer. <clears throat> so this way, you, have, you can get the one portal where all of your APIs are. You can create one set of development best practices for APIs and, and how to use that, how to secure that, and then uh, put that as, as your kind of governance uh, instructions and, and to, to uh, enforce those. Okay, other thing which is kind of technical, but uh, I think the point, one point uh, I'm trying to make today also is that API management products are technical things, but um, 
and and this kind of like automated publishing is a technical thing that you do with with your developers but uh, it it affects the whole process of how you use api management so basically usually when you start to use these api management products uh, you will do that manually that publishing of the apis so you have one or two apis then you you most likely will just go ahead and use the kind of console and publish them one by one. But when you get more APIs, it makes sense to build a deployment and, and a continuous integration pipeline to handle that DevOps way. So in the same way, you are getting more agility by developing your applications in a DevOps manner. In the same way, you should integrate the, the DevOps pipeline to the API management tool. And, and this actually also ties into other issues, uh, which I'll talk a bit more about later in the API Center of Excellence and how, how that works. But okay, so this is a pretty simple thing to do, nothing uh, special here. This can be done with most of the current API management solutions. Uh, but we might have small issues here. So let's say we have defined a API style guide saying that all APIs, for example, uh, should have uh, open a API specification that includes description of the API, the owner of the API, so this kind of basic information, and also information relating to the, the how you define the terms kind of REST specification or REST guidelines, if you want. So, so the problem now is if previously this uh, creation of the APIs and publishing is, has been done, for example, by a central team, uh, API team, uh, then it's been easy to enforce these standards. But now, when you start using the CI pipeline, actually what you might end up, if you're successful, is that uh, in a couple of months, you have lots of new APIs on the API catalog in the developer portal, but you might have lots of APIs that zero information on the documentation. You don't know who the API owner is, who to contact in case of issues, and so on. So this, this is an issue that is kind of a result of this technical advancement, is that we need to put some kind of other kind of enforcement point on the API audit, if you will. In, in, for example, uh, if you know API Ops Cycles, there's a very good uh, API audit form that you can fill each time you publish an API to see that everything is uh, as it should be. But how should you do it when you're doing automated publishing? So uh, this is still kind of under de debate. There are some solutions like automated checking of the audit tools that some companies have built, or you could have the, uh, the audit or the enforcement tied into the application uh, publishing process. So most likely, if you're building a microservice application, you will have some kind of deployment uh, checkpoint. So there you might, might end up with, with putting this API audit uh, form or whatever checks in there as well. Okay, service mesh. So there's been a couple of uh, sessions about this. And uh, this is also something we see as an interesting uh, development in API management. So basically what you have is when people have been building these microservices applications uh, as REST-based services and, and when, when they start communicating, which they'll have to, because the microservices are really small and you need to, to create a microservice application, you obviously need to communicate. So, so the, the problem then is that there are things you need to do. How do you secure the communication between the microservices? Uh, how do you log? How do you monitor the thing, the whole thing, like we see here? So what Service Mesh has helped us is take care of this kind of general needs of the microservice uh, network of services, so to say. Uh, 
So security, monitoring, logging, error handling, and so on. Uh, and also, it has some additional features that are actually very interesting. For example, this kind of idea of canary deployments, where you, you can take a service or API implementation and, and gradually take that into uh, production, where, say, 20% of the traffic will get forwarded to that. And there, you reduce the risk of, of publishing new versions of the microservices. But when we think about this, and, and this was talked on the other sessions on this as well, security, monitoring, logging, routing, isn't this all the same things actually that API management does? And yes, the, the, the answer is partly yes. Uh, so some of those features are, are kind of similar, but um, what, what you will get from API management that you don't get from, from service mesh is, for example, the developer portal. And, and if you think about it, the service mesh is not really built for publishing like external APIs. It's meant as a tool to help the inter-service communication. So that, that kind of ties into the features that are available there as well. So, okay, what, what developments do we see here? So, we had uh, sessions from WSO2 and IBM, at least, today, seeing how does their API management solution integrate with, with Istio, which is one of the prominent service mesh implementations. And that's very interesting. So, what we see, and other vendors as well doing, is that the API gateway, or API management product, will kind of delegate some of the features it's using currently to the service mesh and, and the kind of the proxy that is used there. So that will take over some of the responsibilities of the gateway, but not all. And also, uh, I've had some, some discussions on, on this when we talk about service mesh, is, is why would you even use Kubernetes? So it's not that obvious, it depends on where, where you talk about this, but not every company is full into Kubernetes and building all their microservices applications there. There are other container platforms, and there's, for example, serverless function as a service that doesn't fit into this service mesh picture at all. And then, in addition to that, you also have the um, applications that are there that are not microservice applications that will never get into this Kubernetes environment where this service mesh might be utilized. So most likely you will need API management in the future as well. But what you want to do is to kind of identify where your application development is going. So if, if it seems like it's going big time to the Kubernetes, and, and then probably you will be using a service mesh in the future. And then you should look at, okay, if I have an API management solution, how does that support Istio? Is that something we can use? Or if you're still evaluating the different uh, API management vendors, then this is something that you should weigh on, on your evaluation process. Okay. A couple of words on security. We also had lots of great sessions on this, but just to point out a few things that maybe hasn't been talked about today. Uh, there, there are lots of API attacks more and more, and, and there's a good uh, interesting uh, estimate by Gartner saying that in, uh, in 2022, so not in the so distant future, actually the API abuse, so attacks, using APIs will be the most frequent attack vector to, to steal or, or enterprise data or to, to attack the, the uh, systems. So, and that kind of makes sense because more and more all of our enterprise assets will be, will be published over APIs. Some of them will stay private, but more and more will get public APIs. So one thing we've seen now come up, 
And this is actually not, not anything new with regards to web applications, but with regards to APIs is that you, um, API management platforms will tell you, or the, the vendors most, mostly tell you that the API gate will, will provide you with all the security that you need. But when you start to look at it more, there are actually uh, very much va variants in what kind of attacks they do protect out of the box and what kind of attack protection perhaps you will need to do some custom coding or so something use something else. Uh, so at least I was um, surprised actually when uh, doing some investigation of the, some of the major vendors is that most of the things are not there uh, by default. So that's one reason why you might want to look at, uh, have a long hard look at your API management tool and see uh, what kind of threat detection possibilities there exist. Uh, so this web application firewall uh, products have mostly been used for uh, for securing web applications, but now when they they have been appearing more and more with SaaS applications, so meaning SaaS services on the public clouds, and uh, for example, AWS provides a web application firewall and Azure. So we've seen more integration between the two, and and some things you can do with with web application firewall, for example, you can analyze your traffic patterns, and you can see what kind of normal traffic patterns does your business have, and what kind of pattern is abnormal behavior. And this is something no API management platform can do for you, or, or any cloud provider can do. And also, to, just to raise the question on developer portals, so I see a lot of talk about um, API security, but not so much talk on uh, developer portal security. So, so what we see a lot with developer portals is they are uh, mostly uh, they are either custom built by the API management vendor or they use some kind of content management system technology behind the scenes. So there's a lot of security vulnerabilities being published all the time to this. So uh, what that basically means is you need to stay up to date on your version of the API management system to be able to get those updates. So once or twice a year update is not good enough. Or if you're using SaaS version, then, then you are delegating that responsibility obviously to the vendor. And, and a word of caution for those that are using uh, custom API portals is that then you're managing all of that yourself. So all the responsibility for all the components uh, will be yours with all the different libraries having secure patches and so on. Okay, a couple of words about event-based APIs. Uh, there's actually a good presentation coming up at 2 o'clock from Fran Mendes uh, on async API. I suggest uh, if you're interested you, you attend that. Uh, but what we just to put this in the picture for API management, what we see is used is this kind of asynchronous APIs for user interfaces where you might want to have a more responsive user interface when you submit an order, for example, and you want updates to come to the web application more, more uh, frequently and not being necessarily needing to pull the web service all the time. So that kind of event-based uh, protocols like WebSockets or, or Webhooks is something that, that fits into the API management uh, products. But it actually is really uh, not that well supported at the moment. So talk with your vendor about this. Uh, this I will not go through because this is kind of another thing. Uh, and then a couple of words about API Center of Excellence. I'll just go through very quickly and then summarize because I'm running out of time. So we talk about the CI/CD and and the necessity of of some kind of governance on the API, and usually this means some kind of API team forms in the in the 
customer. So, so that might be a team of a couple of people or 10 people. And uh, what we see is more that you don't want to have that kind of team that you rely on that team for everything related to APIs, like publishing APIs or doing something, but more you want to delegate that responsibility to the lots of application development teams that you have in-house, for example, on different business units. And, and that is the way we see the trend going more. And the way you do that is like having the API management tool, using the developer portal, uh, enabling CI, CD, and so on. And more the responsibility for the API team goes more into coaching the API development teams and the business and kind of evangelizing the API way rather than being the one central police that governs all things related to APIs. So you're more of an enabler and, and that's why uh, maybe we shouldn't talk that much about the center of excellence but more of this kind of enablement center. Okay, so the recommendations we have is plan for multi-cloud, see where you are right now, where you want to be, and then evaluate your API management solution. Automate as much as you can and enable, so, so use the self-service uh, things that we talk about, um, and move more into the enablement phase. And events, we didn't have much time to go into that, but talk with the consumers of your APIs, and do they actually need this kind of features? It will give more, more value to some use cases to have this. And also, what we didn't have time to discuss is evaluate if you have a program of event-based architecture. We see this coming up more and more in, in, uh, in our customers. And then position that in your API strategy. So what, what is part of the APIs and what is part of the event-based architecture. Thank you. Thank you, Janne.